Hey, I want to welcome everyone again to a short demo on Creo Parametric. In this demo, we're going to look at creating holes using the pattern tool for those holes, and then be able to create a pattern in the second part based upon the holes in the first part. So in this example here, what I'm doing is creating actually a threaded hole, just for an example in this purpose, and we'll place this uh, just uniformly, let's say five units from each end in this case. So a pretty standard, standard technique here as far as creating a hole within a part um, in Creo Parametric. And then what we'll do is we'll pattern this hole. And we could do a variety of different uh, different techniques. I'm just going to use a directional pattern in this case. And we'll just choose, a, again, a certain number of elements being patterned. And uh, once again, we'll go in the second direction. Uh, so we cover a little more area as far as uh, surface area. And we'll use the spacing relatively the same or near the same as what it was in the for the original. And we can see we have basically a pattern created now in the singular part. Now what I would like to do is create this pattern in a second part but have this part, the pattern in the second part or the holes in the second part reference this. So for this example or for the next part of the example I'll have another block which I already created and have it in a different color too and a different appearance. And we're going to create an assembly now and then go through and actually show the technique on how we can align holes from one part to another part and have them stay aligned even if the par parts move within the assembly itself. Okay. So for this example, we'll start with the basic assembly, and we'll bring in our first part uh, with all the holes. And we'll just do a standard default constraint, and then we'll assemble our second part, basically the part with no holes. In this example, I'm just going to use normal or standard coincident constraints in this case, nothing, nothing fancy, basic block uh, at this point, and just doing surface to surface to surface. Okay. And we'll change the tag here to coincident. Okay, so they're pretty much standard uh, standard alignment here, surface to surface, uh, one block on top of another block. And if I change to a wireframe, you'll actually see the holes in the bottom part. Okay, now I want to create a hole in the top part, but have the hole aligned to the hole in the bottom part. And hence, we'll use the center axis of the holes, hole being creating a center axis when they're created. So I'm going to create a hole, place it on the top surface of the top part, but I'm also going to align it to the center axis on the uh, part in the bottom of the hole on the bottom itself. And then just like I did in the uh, part itself, I'll change this to a threaded hole. We'll use the same type of hole itself and create that. And I can see it's aligned now. The hole in the top part is aligned to that hole in the bottom part. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is repeat that over and over again for the same number of holes that are in the bottom part but in the top part. And what I'm going to do is use a pattern. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to look at the geometry, uh, in this case the feature uh, geometry, and this being the hole, and I'm just going to pattern the hole. Now, since that hole is based on the center axis of the hole in the bottom part, and that hole in the bottom part is part of a pattern, this hole in the top part picks up the bottom pattern part, pattern, if you will, as a reference. Hence, I see all the dots. So that's where all the holes in this top part are going to be created. Now, if you don't want any of these, just turn a black dot to a white dot, and it won't create that pattern hole. But if you want them all, we'll just accept them all. And now what I can see is all of these holes are created in the top part, aligned vertically over the holes in the bottom part because of the pattern and the pattern alignment. Now to illustrate these stay together, let's say I shift the top block, if you will, to the right or the left a little bit. And we'll look at this left constraint and we'll just move the left constraint uh, a specific distance. doesn't technically matter how far. I'm just going to pull this over a little bit. And I can see the blocks are a little bit offset now. And when I complete this, I'll see the block actually moves, but the holes do not. They stay aligned vertically. So another example of how to easily create multiple holes referencing holes from another part, and they stay aligned even if the parts move or the geometry moves. Again, another example of Creo Parametric and one of the many ways to uh, basically increase your productivity through various uh, design and engineering techniques. Creo Parametric. Thank you.